bodybuilding fans, we're here at Venice Beach, the mecca of bodybuilding. You never know who you're going to run into, and guess who I ran into, but IFBB pro Jenny Lynn. Jenny, welcome to the Fit Show. Thank you very much. How are you doing these days? I'm doing great. I have oh. three weeks out from the Olympia, so. Three weeks. We are three weeks out. We are DEF CON 3. Exactly. Now, Jenny, I know you live in Northern California. What brings you down to Southern California? Uh, I came down, I come down generally every two weeks to train with Charles Glass. So I came down last night. I did a photo shoot yesterday afternoon, and then uh, this morning I'm going to train with Charles. So you're, fly on home. So you're already doing photo shoots and everything leading up to the Olympia. Yeah, I'm trying to get as much done prior to so that, you know, the week after is not too slammed. Now, is that a matter of necessity, or is it just one of those things where it helps you get in shape so you don't mind doing them before? I know a lot of the guys are a little tricky when it comes to doing shoots before the show. Right. Um, no, I mean, a lot of times even magazines don't want us as hard as we are on the stage. So a month prior to, we're kind of in good shape, but not quite that hard yet. So okay. for magazines, generally like the whole month prior to is pretty filled with the shoots. Do you find that it helps you in your training, or is this just kind of a big pain in the ass because you're, you know, you're trying to train, you're trying to get your meals, and you have to do a photo shoot? Uh, no stranger um, to photo shoots myself. I know they can be very long and tenuous. Right. It's, it's kind of a necessary evil, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun, but yeah, it definitely it's, it takes some time out of your training. So. Sure. You have to schedule it appropriately. So, uh, Jenny, we're three weeks out of the Olympia. Uh, you, you've been no stranger to the Olympia stage. You've been running up the last two years. Uh, winner of three Arnold Classics. Uh, you could have been a winner of four Arnold Classics, but uh, something took a little right turn along the way here uh, this past year, Jenny. Can you tell us about that? Um, I got the stomach flu the day before the show. So I dieted for three months for the show, and then sadly enough, about 24 hours before the show, I just got sick. I had a 103 degree fever and couldn't barely stand, so. Well, I know any of us that were there were a little shocked because uh, a lot of us obviously, you know, you don't see a lot of the contestants before, right. uh, you know, the, the big uh, pre-judging comes up. But all of a sudden the lineup came out and noticeably missing was you. <laughs> and, you know, then obviously the, the uh, speculation started running wild. Where's Jenny Lynn? Is she okay? What happened? Right. Uh, you know, it turns out, like I said, you got the stomach flu. Right. Uh, timing obviously couldn't have been worse. Not and, even uh, if I tried. No. <laughs> uh, you know, thank God everything came out okay there. Uh, but, you know, how heartbreaking was it to, to uh, be training that long, you know, three months of your life, shoots, everything, right, right up into the day, I mean, literally 24 hours out, and, you know, you, you get ill. It was devastating to sit there out my hotel window and look down and go, I should be competing down there. So, yeah, it was, it was rough, but everything happens for a reason. Well, like a true champ, you rebounded, you've come back, Jenny, you look fantastic. Uh, again, we're three weeks now. Obviously, uh, you've run, take runner-up in the last two Olympias to Devana, to the same girl. Is there anything you can do in your training or in your preparations uh, that, that you can actually uh, you know, get past her into that winner's circle, or is it just something where it's just one body type against another? Very good question. You know, I mean, definitely, and figure they don't want us that big, so it's not like in bodybuilders where you can just add on this extra mass to change your physique that right. much. So a lot of it does come down to genetic structure. For me, getting my legs in the best condition possible has always been my main concern, so that's where I've more frequently come down to train with Charles, and I've added track, an extra track practice into my workout scheme during the week, so I do that every other day. Um, so it's it's helped, so we'll see how it goes in three weeks. Well, I can't see where training at the uh, world's greatest trainer, Charles Glass, wouldn't help, Jenny. No doubt. And that's what we're gonna do now, is get into one of your workouts and uh, see exactly what Charles has laid out for you, and uh, we'll wish you good luck at the Olympia. Thank you very much. You got it, Jenny. On this, on this particular exercise right here, we keep the feet low so we work more of the quads and less of the glutes because we do glutes on another exercise. So she's got her feet really, little bit, really low on the platform. Charles, that's going to hit more of the front quads. Front quads and just above the knee. Just above the knee. Or the teardrop muscle for those uh, keeping score at home. She's using a very fast pace on this routine. Is that by design, I assume? Uh, pretty much. She's a figure girl. We're not trying to get her big and hard and muscular. We want her nice and tight. So we're trying to keep everything real nice and fast so when she does cardio afterwards, it's a lot less to burn. Gotcha. 
Now, this is kind of an old school exercise here, Charles. They uh, had something years ago called sumo squats. That's why I assume yeah. this is tailored after. It's tailored after it, but just a little short from being a sumo. Sumo's out a little wider, and you also drive your hips up really far forward. This here, we're always trying to work this underneath the glutes a little bit to keep it nice and tight. Gotcha. So this is designed purely for the inner thigh and the glutes? Yes. Charles, obviously this routine is designed uh, specifically for Jenny. Uh, what are you trying to do with her physique? What changes are you trying to implement with this routine? You know, actually, you know, there's very little you got to do with her body. She has, you know, a great body as it is. And what we're trying to do is get a little bit more hamstring involvement because mm -hmm. we need a little bit more to balance those legs up because she has powerful quads. Right. So the hamstring can balance that out, it'd be great. And we also want to keep that glute nice and tight and small. Charles, I noticed you're stopping her about three quarters up, so she's not going all the way down and she's not coming all the way up either. I'm trying to keep all the pressure right there. So we keep the muscle constantly working. Now, if I let it go all the way up, she's gonna relax. I don't want that relaxed state. I want to keep it nice and tight and stiff in there. Very cool. Wow, that is a pace, boy. That whole thing took about 10 minutes. I mean, just one to the other to the other. I gotta assume, uh, uh, Charles, let me ask, I assume there's as much cardio involved in this uh, than the training itself. Well, that's why it's easy to do your cardio afterwards because you have no more glycogen in the body and you're ready to burn fat. Gotcha. So if you go from here to cardio, you're burning what? No, I'm noticing, Charles, that a lot of your theme is that it really, if you go back, as we've been around for a little bit, unfortunately, um, a lot of this stuff is old school techniques. I mean, it, it hasn't really changed that much, but literally, you know, depleting down the glycogen levels, trying to burn more fat with slow cardio, that type of thing. It's no difference. No difference. <laughs> it changed. It, it worked go. then, it'll work now. It'll work now. Okay, Charles, what do we have here? Obviously, a uh, horizontal press. Uh, I see her legs are really extreme now, toes really out there. Yes. Uh, this is really more reminiscent even uh, from the other one right. as a sumo. Well, this is pretty much like a sumo because now you notice our hips are coming up into right. the push. I was just so going to ask you about totally that. Inside. As you can see, if we can catch that on the camera, uh, she's actually going down flat back and then actually rolling her hips up, up as she brings off. the weight right. back. Because why? You put more pressure where? On the glutes. On the glutes. Now, if she pulls the heels up, you go hamstring the glutes. Gotcha. Obviously a pure isolation movement here, Charles, yes. with a one-legged press. Yes. All we try to do is get more of the glute area and hamstring. Remember, she, her quads are great. Yeah. But, but we get that tie-in for the glute and ham area. Mm -hmm. Make it look really nice. She, Good separation of Yeah, Jenny's known. She's got really nice thighs. We like everything. to say, very yeah. powerful. But you need mm -hmm. to complement that by making the hamstring match the front. It has to match it. Otherwise, you have a set of great quads. Right. Not leg. But, but not a complete physique. There you go. Push up. Right there. Don't turn the hips out. Keep it in. Now go. Right there. That's it. Right there, perfect. That's it, good. Don't try to go too high. Keep it on the glute. Now you see the difference on the glutes on this one? Yeah, yeah. Totally. So you got a different angle. I noticed also on the press, Charles, you had a different foot position, right. obviously different angle to the press. Right. So because you're... that's the squat press, it drops down on you. It's not like a 45 degree press. Right. Differences even in, in the leg pressing itself. Right. And obviously, this is targeted to hit muscles uh, from different areas and different angles. Exactly. That gives you completeness. Sure. And that's what we shoot for completeness. Now, you can see where it works. It keeps those hips nice and small in there. Look at the glutes, how tight they are. And that's what you're looking for. So, these obviously would be more advantageous to a girl getting ready for figure or fitness right. uh, than regular squats. Right, right. You can see where Jenny's just moving again from piece to piece to piece. Again, all targeting different areas, but really the same areas, trying to hit those areas from different angles. Uh, you can see where much like in men's bodybuilding, the contest is one loss from the back uh, with back double biceps and back lat spreads. Uh, the contest in figure is one and loss with the back also, but this time with the glutes and the hams. Jenny, I gotta say, that was one hell of a workout. For anybody who's watching this at home, uh, for the bodybuilders out there who think you figure girls, all you do is go out there and do quarter turns right, all right, nice. Right, right. Uh, you can see there's a little bit more involved than that. There's a lot more involved. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Uh, Now you actually fly down here just to train with Charles. Right. And you've got, I understand you still got cardio to do, so you actually split up. You got two hours of cardio coming to you today. I do. Uh, 45 minutes this morning. You're obviously gonna finish that off tonight. I'll finish up my last hour, 15 tonight. Generally, when I'm not coming down to train with Charles, then right. I'll do 45 minutes in the morning, um, half an hour after I train, and then the, another 45 minutes at night. So. 
Let's lay out the bulk of it tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, if, if work ethic is the key to success, I believe we have a new Miss Olympia at Lumen Large here, Charles. Put it this way, she better be on a game. Don't bring a B game this time, bring the A game. <laughs> Gotta bring the A game. You got it. Well, Charles, uh, thank you all for your help here. Oh, thank uh, you. Jenny, best of luck to you. There's thank no you. question in my mind. You will be at your A game at the Olympia. Uh, don't be surprised if you see the new Miss Olympia crown, and it's Jenny Lynn.